Hello, everybody. Um, I am Hernan. I am also at the Nebraska State Museum. And I, first, I wanted to ask you something. So there was a big thing for a big celebration on, on Sunday, typically a big family day. What's the name of that celebration? Easter. Did, you, did any of you celebrate Easter? I hope it was a, a really nice celebration and it was happy. But oftentimes, that's not the case when you get together with family, right? Sometimes there's a little bit of drama when you get to uh, the, the big uh, family holidays. Uh, not only limited to Easter, sometimes you get a little bit of family drama in one of the biggest ones here in the United States, Thanksgiving, right? Sometimes uh, some people get uh, some unresolved issues from the past, then drama ensues. Um, but, you know, I mean, one thing is to have some rivalries or some issues from high school, but something that actually a lot of people have to deal with is hate because of who they are or who they love. Uh, maybe the way uh, the color of their skin is or where they're coming from. Um, I don't know, maybe you wanted to go home for Thanksgiving and bring your girlfriend along, like in Master of None, but um, your family wasn't expecting that you were gonna bring a girl. Maybe they're asking you to explain to Mima that that's not your girlfriend, that's your roommate. And that probably sucks for her, right? So pardon my language. That really stinks for her. Um, maybe, Maybe your daughter did not bring a girlfriend. Maybe she brought a boyfriend. But the boyfriend kind of looks like this. Oh my God. And if you haven't seen Get Out, Academy Award winning movie, you totally should. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Maybe one of your uncles is really frazzled because they went in, they heard that there was a brand new book for kids to tell wonderful stories, and it was about a super cute bunny and it was great, <laughs> and it turned out that that cute little boy bunny loves other cute little boy bunnies, and now he has to explain it to your little niece. That's kind of awful, right? Well, I am from Mexico. Uh, we also have family gatherings over there. The big one is Christmas, uh, because in theory we're all Catholics. Not really, but you know. And one of my uncles, my mom's uh, youngest brother, told me, Hernan, you're a biologist, right? You like women, right? So tell me of a gay animal, because he went on a horrible uh, uh, trade that I won't repeat here. But he told me, that is anti-natural. Tell me of a single gay animal in nature. And I said, well, I guess it's time to put my degree at work. Do I know of any gay animals? And I said, well, let's show my uncle in a humorous way that there are gay animals. So for example, I told him, uncle, did you know that 90% of spiders have gay sex? And it's because it's really hard for them to tell boy spiders from girl spiders apart. And they're not gonna pass up an opportunity to miss the one out of 10, right? So they just do it all. And they're really happy about it. And there's actually the citation of it. So grad students, like you were mentioning, you need to memorize all the citations for your quals. This is when they come in handy. But then he was like, that's a cartoon, come on. I'm talking about like serious stuff. Oh, so you mean like not cartoons? Okay. What if I tell you about uh, the conga lines that male fruit flies do when they uh, smell a certain pheromone and they have a mutation on their brain? So if they have, the fruit flies have this mutation, they get turned they get attracted to uh, other boy uh, fruit flies that smell like boys. And if they don't have that mutation, they are attracted to female smelling uh, individuals. That's pretty cool, right? Peer reviewed science. Did you know that male mealworms have sex with male mealworms so they can transfer some of their sperm? So when those other male beetles go and mate with the females, they also kind of get a little bit more offspring into the mix. It's pretty cool, right? And in order to do that, they need to 
have sex with a boy. Now I'm gonna show you a really quick video. Did you know that monarchs also have gay sex? And let's see if I can stop. Now, do you see the black dots? And it's gonna be kind of hard to point out, but I guess I can do it here. Do you see this dot over here? Black dot, black dot on the other one? Only male monarchs have those black dots. So those are two male butterflies doing that. <laughs> and there is the citation right there. So butterflies do it too. But then my uncle started rolling his eyes. I was like, oh, well, but bugs, come on. Oh, you wanted to bring in the vertebrates. Okay, let's pull out the big guns. Do you like deer, uncle? And then I showed him this, and he was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and then he was like, okay, come on. He was obviously going for the girl, and then the boy, other boy, got in the way. It's just a mix-up. He's like, really? Let's turn off the lights. <laughs> and then, bam! <laughs> Where's the female? <laughs> Those look pr like pretty gay uh, deer to me. This happens in birds as well. Penguins are world famous for being very, very gay. Those are wild penguins that they are together and sometimes when uh, a female dies and they can't raise, maybe they get a male partner. So there you go, same sex marriage in penguins. And in, in captivity, this happens even more frequently. But then my uncle was like, but, but penguins, like, Oh, you want me to give you a really big, butch and manly example of an animal. What about the king of beasts? Lions are super manly, right? They should be very, very straight. Well, there you go. A lot of, of, of male lions, when they're together, when they get kicked out of the group by the females, they form all these clans, all these groups, and that's how they bond. They mate with each other. And don't get me started on ducks and, and waterfowl. <laughs> they do that too. But then he asked me this question, and I remember it very clearly. But come on, tell me about a superior animal. It's like, okay, we're getting really specific. And then I said, well, what if I bring one of our closest living relatives into the mix? And then I'm showing, I show them one of my favorite primates, bonobos. The ones in the top left corner are two female bonobos, as you can tell by their breasts. They're kissing, and afterwards, they're actually having sex. They're rubbing their genitalia together. The picture at the bottom are two male bonobos and their French kissing. We've been apart from bonobos but for about six million years. So that means that in evolutionary terms, the simplest explanation is that us and all of our ancestors French kissed. That's very normal. It looks just like a night at the rail yard, 1 a.m. Saturday night. <laughs> Grad students, you should not go there because there's conflict of interest policies in this university. Do not go. And then if you want to get even more uh, into the mix, orangutans do something very, very similar. So then, if you look at the, around the world, that's just a map from 1999, it's pretty old, of all the cases where there's uh, homosexuality or non-straight uh, relationships with animals all over the world. Mammals, birds, what have you, happens everywhere. There's actually, now we know that there's a genetic basis, you excise a gene, you remove a gene from mice, and some female mice like other female mice, and some male mice, well, they like everything. So. To answer a question to my uncle, is homosexuality anti-natural? I will refer you to one of the most famous evolutionary biologists of all times, GBS Haldane, and he said, well, I think nature is queer that we can suppose. And he said, from the southeast, southeastern blueberry bee to, of the United States to more than 130 different species of birds worldwide, the birds and the bee literally are queer. And just think, how can nature be wrong if even nature loves scarlet and crimson? Hashtag, even nature loves scarlet and cream. <laughs> hashtag, Hus Husker Whitbecker. Hashtag, hate will never win. And hashtag, we were black on Wednesdays in this university. Thank you very much.